Are you here to kill me? I know what this is. I've seen one before, many, many years ago. It belonged to a man I met in half remember dream. A man possessed of some radical notions. One hundred for a hundred. The podcast for all you new movie watchers out there that are trying to figure out what you want out of film. I give you a hundred movies. I, I waded through the muck. <laughs> to distill down a um, hundred films. That I think everybody should watch. If you're trying to figure out how to get into film um, film watching, I should say each one of these is attached with a hundred word review, this podcast and put out 100, the first hundred days of uh, 2020. Yesterday we talked about Spider-Man is the spider verse. Very good comic book movie. Very good Spider-Man movie. Very good movie in general today. Number 41 on our list is 2010's inception directed by Christopher Nolan. Let's get into this 100 word review for Inception. Here we go. <clears throat> From the mind of Christopher Nolan comes Inception, a reversed heist film that exists entirely within the mind of the mark the heist is happening to. He doesn't fail to deliver on such a mind bending concept as his ensemble cast struggle through the mind of Robert Fisher attempting to plant an idea in his head he has to be convinced was his all along. Laid out in a similar fashion to video games, the slick action scenes in each level, as well as the unshedding of truth and confrontation, Inception is a great mix between hard sci-fi and popcorn fun. Look, man, if I remember correctly, Nolan put out one movie in between each of his Dark Knight trilogy movies. Uh, Inception came out between uh, The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. This was his cleansing of a palate, as you will. Um, this is, I think... A one of the when you talk about heist films, I think you know what you go listen to the Cinnamon's top three heist films with myself and Doug Davidson from uh from sometime last year. You will find that I put Inception at number one or two on my list. I think number two. I think Ocean's Eleven might have been number one. Uh, this movie is balls out trippy. <laughs> the, the 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 idea of playing with dreams, the fact that people can go in and manipulate you while you sleep through your dreams is in. Incredibly refreshing concept, I do believe. And it is an incredibly interesting one as well. The fact that they uh, play with time throughout the dreams as well, uh, I think was a great idea. Because it seems like you'll have a dream where it seems like you were just running for 100 days and wake up. And it's only been eh, maybe about 45 minutes, if that. I, I heard each dream only lasts a, a number of minutes while it seems like you're in the dream for an eternity. Especially if something's chasing you. And in this case, uh, some things are being chased. You know, our 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 characters are are chasing through the mind of or racing through the mind of, of Robert Fisher while they're being chased by the uh, the mental projections to kick him out of those dreams. The fact that they're trying to plant an idea to uh, to dissolve Robert Fisher's company um, it's 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 absolutely ridiculous. I don't know how this works, but it does. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio and the closest we'll get to an American James Bond. Uh, does wonderfully in this. I do believe uh, Joseph Gordon, Le Joseph Gordon Levitt, Ellen Page, uh, Tom Hardy, Ken Watanabe, and the chemist whose name I can never remember is one of my favorite ensemble casts uh, in film. <laughs> Strangely enough, so is Ocean's Eleven. A lot of comparisons between this and Ocean's Eleven. This is slick, stylish. Like I said, it is set up like video games, kind of, where each level deeper into the mind of Robert Fisher is kind of like a different video game. You got the, uh, the hotel level, right? That, uh, that Joseph Gordon Levitt has his nice, uh, you know, dimension bending, uh, gravity bending fight scene. You have the snow level that Tom Hardy gets to shine in. It's like everybody gets to shine on their different levels. Right. And you got Ellen page kind of holding the whole thing down as the as the anger trying to keep uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character in check, and uh, you know, and he has to finally just confront the one thing that he's been avoiding this whole time in the, the mental projection of his crazy ex wife Mal, played by Marion Cotillard. Whew, whew, almost lost it there. It was a test you might. I'd have been in some trouble there. <laughs> um, 
Uh, this this movie let me know not to trust Marion Cotillard in Dark Knight Returns or Dark Knight Rises. And boy, was I right. Uh, this is an amazing science fiction film. It is an amazing science fiction film. If you have not seen Inception, there's a reason that Christopher Nolan is my favorite working director to this day. And that is because of films like this. Original films that make you think. We don't get enough of those each year, I think. And on a huge blockbuster scale, let me put that out there. We don't get many of these sci-fi films that make you think and come out like, yo, I just need a second to process everything that happened in this movie. And you do. First time you watch this film. So if you've not watched Inception, do yourself all of the favors. Check out number 41 on our list. It is Inception.